We're in. We're in. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Right on. Oh. Still feel like I have that uh that Corsican uh, mud on my shoe. <laughs> that was some serious mud. I don't know what that's it's like play doh and flour have Well they all baby. kept saying they're like, Oh yeah, it's just you know, like lake mud. Yes, yeah, like mud. it's something. I don't know. <laughs> i you know, back when I used to go to Lakeland there, I've been around it a good bit. Never had that kind of mud on me. Never before. I don't know what that's a that's a whole different type of mud. That's that mud that comes back with you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, was, that was brutal. Wow. It's been a we've done a we've done a bit. A few things. Done a done a bit, yeah. yeah. Uh first go around since uh grilling show. Yeah. Which technically we, we had one that aired we did on the on, VIP on, night. On the VIP night. So if you uh missed it, go back and listen. Yep. You know, because we released it as we were there. <laughs> <laughs> that's very that's very uh back to the future too confusing there. Um but it was good, man. Ton of fun. I had a really good time. I'm not even going to lie. I had a great time. It went far better than I would have imagined for only planning it, you know, in four months, uh, for having, you know, fully self-funded it, no sponsors. It went so much better than I imagined. And I'm not even just imagining that because we sent out a feedback link yep. and the feedback is the same. Um, but before we get into that, welcome to This Week in Barbecue, the barbecue focused show that introduces you to both the good, the bad, and everything in between in the world of barbecue. I'm your host, Rashid Phillips, and joining me, you know, I, I don't know, at this point in time, just like, <laughs> it's like the Sue co host, co host, <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Lee Garman. And uh, we're going to get into some fun stuff today. We've got a fun filled episode. We've e- even got a, a, a special call in guest with some new deets information and a lot of fun stuff ahead. But uh, as I was mentioning, Grill and Chill was a success for, for me and those who um, came were getting a lot of four-star and five-star ratings on the reviews. Heck yeah. Um, the, it has been completely unanimous that, yes, I will be attending next year <laughs> from the reviews so far. Um People were really liking the alcohol. They do want to see a little bit more variety there. They loved the food variety, loved the venue. I'm really, really excited. Uh, people have a whole different list because, you know, I even put out, who would you like to see here mm-hmm. next year? You know, it ranges from Auntie Delilah again to Miss Sylvie all the way to uh, Big Mo. Uh, people loved Evan, so shout out to Evan, the gladiator. Uh, BBQ. We got to work he, on that. He name, did all right. Kate. He didn't. He didn't. Uh, he's got some stuff to learn, but he held his own. You know, yeah. it's, it's it's rigorous. It's rigorous doing these things with me because you know it's only two speeds: keep up or get left behind. <laughs> <laughs> so for being seventeen, and I felt nice. Sometimes you got to show those young whippersnappers. You know, yeah, I'm, you know, twice your age, but I can still get down with the get down. Yeah, right? yeah. Do these uh do these shovel carries? See how strong <laughs> those shoulders really are. <laughs> Um, they were talking about Pops's ribs, Auntie's greens, the jerk chicken, the jerk lamb. If you missed it, people are always asking, when are you going to do an event with, you know, your home dishes? Well, I, I, I was literally it. threw an entire event where all I cooked was dishes from my childhood. Um, oh, well, I didn't know. Well, turn on that little bell, subscribe <laughs> to the newsletter, <laughs> make sure you're following because we all know the Instagrammies and stuff doesn't actually show everything to everyone, but... I don't know how much more I could have marketed this. We had Facebook ads, Instagram ads, email marketing, and it worked because we had attendees from the UK, Dubai, Barbados, Vegas, Utah, Chicago, Florida, like all over. So I don't want to hear it. any more excuses. Oh, I can't get a ticket. Hey, yeah, I mean, I think we covered the four corners of the uh, greater United States, literally. Very, very, very <laughs> much so and very easily. And, I, and I'm and i so appreciative, you know, um, of that. Really just, I've just loved the the feedback. Uh, aside from the heat, there's nothing I could do about the heat. But we've got some stuff. Uh, we've got some stuff. Someone said it's a must-do barbecue fest with great chefs and pit masters cranking out amazing food. Amazing experience. I loved getting to interact with all the chefs on the first night and making connections with people we sat next to, I would definitely attend again. Uh, 
it was lots of fun meeting people from all over, lots of great folks and awesome food. Like, I, I just love it. You know, it's, it's uh, when you put as much time into it as I did, like, th- those bits. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It feels good. So it's what would so you much. say is maybe, um, like, jeez, uh, get words out, Lee, <laughs> um, from the VIP dinner? Yeah. Like, just that whole evening. What, like, I know it's kind of hard to single out one thing, but, yeah. like, what would you say was, like, top moment or thing that happened VIP night? Wow, the VIP the VIP night was great. I loved, I do have to say I loved having the DJ there. Mm-hmm. Um, and But the top moment, I think, was just getting in front of everyone and giving thanks to them for being there, mm-hmm. both local supports and out-of-towners and the out-of-towners vastly outnumbered the local support so oh, yeah of course it kind of step it up um i mean th- kevin was already yeah he, he was, was already mad about it he was it. on it was like hey you all got people you know coming with different currency over <laughs> here <laughs> not even time zone like they had to exchange they, their money <laughs> yeah they went through exchange rates to be here and y'all live right here i can throw a rock and hit some of your guys' mm-hmm. places um and so that was a really good night. And I know there was some feedback, like people wanted DJs both days. That's what the VIP experience is for. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's what the VIP experience is for, you know, because um, the rule was true. Like whatever we had on VIP night, we did not serve mm-hmm. for, you know, the general admin day. And um, I'm almost to the point where I don't want to repeat the same trick. Like, hey, mm. I already made jerk chicken and whole lambs and, you know, curried go, uh, golden lamb this year. I don't think I'm going to do it next year. You know, I'm it's not. going to bring in a bigger whole animal. Yeah, do do that. I might do a whole steer. You never know. i got some <laughs> contacts now. But, you know, if you missed it, you missed the meal. Like, yeah, I'm not, not going to get, this isn't a makeup yeah. uh, <laughs> event. So we'll see. No, but that was definitely a really cool highlight. Um, what about you? You were there behind the lens and all ripping and running. Oh, man. Um it was a lot. Yeah, VIP night, I thought it was just, uh, it was pretty cool how it was just a little bit more intimate. You know, yeah. and like, you know, like even that review was saying, there was, everyone was a little bit more accessible. Yeah. Uh, obviously, you're feeding fewer people with the same amount of hands. So, you know, kind of once service happened, you know, Kevin was signing books, mm-hmm. everyone, you know, you and Logan and a handful of the other people who were there, just roaming around, talking yeah. to people, saying hey. It was good. You know, it's not quite as crazy as it was on Saturday. So it was just a little bit more, it's a little more laid back. I mean, even like you and Brian have talked about, if you want to start making connections and get to know people, get the VIP. Get the VIP. You'll get a little bit more access. You'll get a lot more because Saturday, Saturday was go. Saturday was go time. Oh, yeah. You know, gates open. We're up at the crack of dawn, getting all the pits fired. And mind you, there was not one briquette used (laughs) this entire (laughs) event. There was no sponsors. There was no nothing. And literally all, everything that you guys tasted, I burned down the wood for. Yeah. So it was all live fire or I burned down coals yep. to be used. That, yep. that, that was it. So this was as, and that was the task I gave um, Evan. I was like, hey, you can do whatever you want on any rig. Keep that going. It's got to be made on fire. Yeah. I don't, I don't want to see you turn a knob anywhere, <laughs> All right. you know, because he wanted to come in and learn because he's going to be at the uh, World Food Championships. Nice. Participating in the open fire. Nice. Uh, he invited me to be a part of the team and I couldn't make it because of conflicting schedules. Yep. But I said, hey, I will give you a heck of a 48 hour open fire intensive this weekend and you can cook on anything here. But all your dishes have to be cooked on these units and rigs and Taught him things from building a cinder block pit to how I laid out to the importance of it to be making your own burn barrels, everything in between. Yep. And uh, he had a good time. He had yep. a good time. And I mean, there were a few times where you're like, hey, I need a few more splits on the burn barrel. Yeah. Like, you gotta watch keep it going. It. Help me. You got you to watch that fire. Yeah. It is a lot because we had the cinder block pit with the lambs, which we did lambs, tomahawks, and steaks on. Mm-hmm. Then we had the uh, goldies. Then we had the Santa Maria and the thousand gallon. That's mm-hmm. a lot of rigs to keep firing and rolling all day long. Yep. You know, it's a lot of fuel. Yep. We definitely put a debt in Pops' wood pile. Um, I think it was almost <laughs> gone. <laughs> oh Blew through that wood pile, but it was necessary because we got to rebuild it anyway. 
Yeah, yeah. Mm. Go chop down a few trees. Yeah. So from both days there, what's uh, what stuck out to you the most out of it all? Because you know I was in my own world. At oh time. yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, I mean both days again. It was kind of just. Yeah, I mean, it feels so like, like it just gets said all the time between you and Brian. But I mean, it really is the community out there. It is. Um, you know, barbecue does seem to be like the more involved I get because, you know, through osmosis, through you and jumping around. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it really is a community. I mean, the, a lot of those faces are the same faces that we see all summer jumping around uh, doing stuff. So, you know, uh, I just think it's cool. I mean, you get people who support you and support what you're doing. Yeah. Um, and then you know, like you chose to do, you got to support that community and support a few other people that were in the community as well, yeah. which I thought was really cool to give back that way, mm-hmm. you know, giving out awards to, uh, <laughs> Eminem and Auntie Delilah and all that kind of stuff. I think it is, uh, I mean, I think it's just a really cool opportunity that you were able to create and curate to, you know, give back to not only a community, but the community that, you know, you kind of live and work in as well. Yeah. I enjoy that. And you know, it was because Pops didn't know about the Auntie Delilah when I had to. Yeah, you know, I yeah. got it. You sometimes I got to keep a trick up my <laughs> sleeve, you know, surprise <laughs> everybody. Um, but we wanted to, and I took a moment because I've been to, as you know, countless of these type of, of, of events. Mm-hmm. And there's always like competition. There's always something. And I was like, I just want to hang out with my buddies, kick back, relax, uh, shake each other's hands, pat each other's back. Like there's no egos. There's no first place. No one's ranked here. We're all on the same tier doing everything for everybody. Um, But acknowledging those that I personally believe have been doing some stuff and they haven't been yet. And I was like, why, why is that? I said, well, I might as well do it myself. So Mm -hmm. designed some, achievement o- awards and certificates that we had printed out uh shout out to fat boy workshop i, b- I might got that wrong but I, if i i'm, I'm gonna tag we'll them it. yeah they uh they did the the engraving for me for those awards and we awarded eminem you know mike and matt of eminem barbecue go and it also happened to be mike's 40th yeah. so that was huge for him to celebrate that with us you know Shout well, out. yeah, just to come. I'm sure he had yeah. potentially better things to do. <laughs> Much better things, but <laughs> shout out to Bettina, uh, his amazing uh, wife, who we've been working with in conjunction, trying to make sure he knew absolutely <laughs> nothing and was just so distracted by the fact that the event was going on that he, you know, couldn't remember his birthday. Yeah. But, you know, uh, presenting them with achievements because they are really moving the needle with their rigs and their designs and their concepts and. That's big. Like yeah. I, I want to give your 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 flowers while you can smell them. Yep. And most heartwarming moment for me was um, presenting a similar award to Auntie Delilah, who I I don't think any of us knew this until she stepped up there and said it. Oh, I, I, yeah. That she'd never received an award. Yeah. And I said, "What? How, how is this possible? You're Oprah's, you know, favorite book. You know, you've done all of these." She's like, "No, she's never gotten it." And this was her first one, and that um, how special it was to her. And I think what made it even more special was that her daughter was there with her to see her, and she just got real emotional. Her and pops embraced. I was like, man, I want to create more moments like that. I want to yeah. honor those who I believe have generally made an impact, whether others have seen it or not. I don't need to wait on them. Like, hey, I'm gonna let you know how bomb you are now because I've got the opportunity to yeah. do so. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that was pretty cool. That was that was definitely like, yay! Hit, hit the feels <laughs> <laughs> for <laughs> that sure. One, that one hit the feels. Um, but then also having the the young kids from the boys and girls club, you know, out there supporting, uh, playing around, and the, it's just picturesque. Like you've got this behemoth of a uh, one thousand gallon smoker with a Santa Maria behind it in front of the lake. Kids playing cornhole behind that amazing sunset of people eating and dancing. Like, that's a Hallmark movie scene <laughs> right there, you know? You put that on a postcard, like, see you next year type of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and for those who have been asking, yes, 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 there will be, uh, I, I guess you can call it a sequel. Yeah, we're going to do it next year. We already have some really good, important stuff. <laughs> <laughs> 
about it for next year, and I'm really excited, but I just can't let you guys know yet. In due time. In due time. It won't be too long because we're going to plan this one a lot further ahead than we did the last yes, one. Yes, not four months. We literally, <laughs> we, well, it wrapped Saturday, Sunday morning we were planning. Oh, yeah. Everything yeah. At, at the brush. We were going through all of it like, okay, we're going to do this, we're going to do this, we're going to knock this part out. Yeah. Great. So, um, yeah, we're, we've, man, I wish I could tell you guys some of it. I really do. I mean, I feel like we could say that um, it's not going to be as hot next year. It won't be as hot next yeah. year. You can definitely <laughs> say that. It will not be as hot next year. Um, it'll be a completely different menu yeah. this year. Oh, next gosh, year. Yeah. Um, what else can we say? Same location. Yep. Same location, same venue. Even more options. Um Maybe some from maybe some new faces, maybe some familiar faces. Yeah, um, yeah. To me, that's going to be a tricky part because I know is. that's something that we've talked about is like, like you know, effectively, like what does the roster look like? Yeah, and it's one of those things like we well, don't want to take it away from the people who like started it, but Very then also true. you want to bring in new people to like give them the opportunity to come in and do their thing. And exactly. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's whatever. And 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 a lot of that too is like you've got so everyone's putting people in but when you guys keep in mind guys this is self-funded this is my me bankroll it's not saying one point is more, more yeah. one person is more important than the other it's also just saying that i like i've just always wanted to just cook with my friends like i'm yeah. finding an excuse to do that so <laughs> <laughs> this is this is it and getting those out and it's not just that it's travel it's lodging it's accommodations it's liquor it's their menu it's their service their help it's their utensils it's, it's a lot yeah um I mean, I'll even say, I mean, there's just stuff like even the next morning that we're talking about, we're like, okay, cool. Well, like, obviously if we... Hold on, I think she's calling oh, in. right now? I think she called us. Uh, well, then let me... Don't say anything up. embarrassing. We may be putting you on the air right now. Can you hear her? No, I've got it all unmuted. A few moments later. Hello? Son of a... No <laughs> way. You've got to be kidding me. Is it no levels again? No. Oh. <sighs> But it rang. It rang. What did you do? Oh, oh there. Wait. It's her. Hello? Yeah. No. There we go. There we go. Yeah. Okay. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Technology. Isn't it great? Oh, well, you Rashid can tell you. I don't even know how to use anything, so. No, she's got a brick <laughs> that folds in half. <laughs> <laughs> and if they ever discontinue it, like, I'm just out the game. Like. <laughs> she's like, before this, she had the... Blackberry with the scroll wheel, and then oh, before man. that, it was Nokia. Uh uh, I had the magic jack. Uh, oh man, <laughs> that's back. That's oh. back there. Remember the sidekicks? Yes. Uh -huh. I'm that thing was awesome. I, I'm not gonna lie. If they redid the sidekick, I'm, I'm jumping I, on it right now. Like, I'm getting it. Like, just that. Or, or the trio, the little Palm Pilot trio. Mm -hmm. I loved that thing. Yes, the trio was my jam. I had loved my Palm. The palm and the oh. sidekick, but if they, I know the sidekick sort of went out because of that big security breach. But if they ever, bring yes, back, they brought back the razor, so there's hope. <laughs> there's hope. Oh yeah, they did bring back the razor. Yeah. You're right. <laughs> that thing was like in every back pocket of every club oh, goer God. for a decade. Yeah, <laughs> that that snap just. Tsh. There's something about being able yeah. to physically like hang up on somebody that that's just not as satisfying with the touch screen. Yeah. I'm just glad T9 is gone and we have keyboards now. Because oh, yeah. oh, the, oh. these days we'll never know the struggle of having to do I the don't triple know, but like, click to T9 though. Be, it was nice when because it was physical. You could text without looking at yeah, the phone. Yeah, you knew what it was. How many movies? Oh did man! Back in the days? <laughs> but like you get when you got into like a text argument with somebody oh, and you're trying to forever. T9 them to death. <laughs> Like, by the time you finish whatever you were going to say, like, you're not even mad anymore. Exactly. Like, I don't even remember what I was talking anymore. It's like, the. Oh, the good old days. What was I was watching this video. There's this guy on on TikTok. His name's Jordan Stallion. And it's like, it opens up with this girl holding this box. And she's like, I asked people what it was for. And they're like, it was for tapes. And they're like, how would you put duct tape in here? They're like, no. Oh, I think they pronounced oh. like a Kizet a player. And oh. he was like, are we that old that that these new, new age kids are discovering things that we still know, but they are, they're thinking it's new? <laughs> like, and oh. that we still have somewhere yeah, in our house? Yeah, I was about to say, I for sure <laughs> still I, have I one. still have cassettes. Yeah. 
I think the game changer was like you remember in math class they would get the overhead projector and put the mood lighting on. Yes, <laughs> yes. we knew what it was. Get you that that nice little cellophane sca- uh, laid on top. Like, mm. all right, guys, here's here's today's quiz. I remember. <laughs> I remember there was like a guy that I liked in uh, algebra class, and I would like put on smoky eye makeup when I knew the projector was gonna come on because I knew it would make me look better. <laughs> Oh, that's, <laughs> what are you doing? What are you doing doing smoky eye in school? Focus on the math. I was like, this is math day, baby. It's on. It's like smoky eye with that nice projector mood lighting. <laughs> oh, don't forget the glitter shadow, like right in the creases. <laughs> what is it? Uh, sl- slow jams, kids edition. Kids bop, slow jams, kids bop. Oh, man. People, kids nowadays, hunting was hard. <laughs> <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't have it. It wasn't so easy. Before, before everything text was messages, in real life. Before text messages, there was the friend hookup. Like, hey, can you go pass this to so and so? Because I know they're in your class. You know that notes. Hey, I remember I know you sit next to him in fourth. Exactly. <laughs> like, and then you'd have to write notes. You'd be, that was the original text message. Everyone's over here worried about text threads. No, somewhere somebody has a shoebox full of notes from a congressman that is just <laughs> damning evidence. <laughs> if they ever get well, I wasn't even like bold enough because I didn't want to like face the rejection right then and there. So I was the one that would be like sliding notes into your locker oh, and i man. and i wouldn't sign them just like and i would sit and watch to like see the reaction like hey erica likes you yeah, signed like, anonymous yes, like you know <laughs> your, your admirer like i'll see you around third period that's back when it was a lot less creepy to do those type of things but you think of it as like you were writing full novels oh at yeah the start of the day at the end of the day you left with like got a you, callus on my finger it is you knew how popular you were by how many notes you had in it like man i forget doing your school reading you were just catching up on your notes <laughs> and i was a word because i'm left-handed so you would know it was me because it was like smear <laughs> Chicken so trash. like you're like you're like oh all the ink smeared it must have been a lefty who wrote this note oh my gosh uh Oh, the good old days. The good old days. The good old days. Well, I guess we should probably tell people who you are if they haven't figured it out by now. Please introduce yourself, caller. Hey, it's Erica Blair, Blue Smoke Blair's Barbecue, coming to you live from Texas. <laughs> Thanks so much for hopping on and going down Thank memory lane. Thank you, guys. Completely forgot this was a barbecue podcast. <laughs> yeah. Did we just turn into a vintage tech podcast? We did just for a hot minute, but we could do it. We could do it. <laughs> Uh, so sis, tell what's, what's going on. You've, uh, you've been up to some, some stuff. You got to hang out with us for a little bit, a couple of weeks ago. How was that? Oh, that was so much fun. When, I mean, that was my first, first time to Corsicana and I mean, it couldn't have been better. Like, I mean, we had the panoramic lake views. I mean, the, the biggest smoker I've ever seen, like props. <laughs> then, you know, you had like the live fire cinder block pits. It was amazing. It truly was like a family reunion. I, I had a blast. My family had a blast and everybody we met there was just so cool. It made it, I have to be honest, it made just the whole barbecue scene and barbecue community Community, it really tied it together because everybody really was just chilling and grilling and eating and everything else. No, I appreciate that so much. I loved it. And thank yeah. you so much for that. Should have um, been in like Corsicana Tourism Board because it was- <laughs> we're working on it. <laughs> we're working on it. I, I, I told him like I'm gonna put Corsicana on the map. You know, you guys are gonna love me or hate me when more and more people move out here and get stuff. But we're gonna let people know about it. But it's it, oh, it, it should definitely amazing. be something that I think people should do. And come visit because you know I'm doing it again next year. You know, try and oh, stop. I'm ar- I'm already booked. I'm already booked. Oh yeah, we talked about it. We talked about. It. We can't. We're not giving them the dates or any of the fun secrets yet. But uh, you guys can definitely expect to see Erica there. And you had so many amazing fans there that were excited to see you. Um, it was just cool the, the and a before. lot of women a yeah. lot of women came out I loved that that yeah. was something that just that really got me because I was like yes and it wasn't it wasn't like oh this is a women's event but there were just so many women that came out and they were so dynamic and just so open and sweet and they really truly loved barbecue and the craft yeah. and I just thought that was amazing I, I agree it was it was a fun and absolutely amazing time and seeing all of them arrive and support and dance like i just i just i like there's clips of everyone dancing with the sun setting i was like man this is just perfect i remember just hanging out watching that and thinking back like, it was beautiful. This, this started as a random thought and look at it now 
So, uh, and I mean, when we get the group electric slide going, like, you know, <laughs> yeah, you know, you know it's a party. You know, hey, every, it's not a cookout unless somebody, and when you had uh, Auntie Delilah over there leading that slide, <laughs> you, that's, that's when you know. That's when you know. All I'm missing is somebody's uncles in those uh, Jesus cruisers. Oh, my God. <laughs> that's, that was that's my all dad. That that's all that's missing. <laughs> I hope we get that uncle there next year, but that's what it would have been. Um, I got him coming down, special delivery, and no give back. And, and bring, bring <laughs> you ma- have to keep him. Bring mama. You can let her know. We got plenty of hot sauce, though. <laughs> I love it. I'm in... I mean, um, we're at Mohegan Sun, and uh, first thing, <laughs> Erica's mom asked uh-huh. me for, y'all, y'all, got to, y'all got hot sauce here? <laughs> I mean, the whole thing, I mean, even like our RV trip driving there, every time we stopped, I mean, she wouldn't even think about like securing the RV or locking the doors. She was like, let me get my hot sauce before we go out. Let me get my hot sauce. Gotta <laughs> have the hot sauce. Keep, she keep that thing on her, and I love her for it. I love her. Unapologetically bring that season and that flavor. Don't ask me no yep. questions. No uh, apologies. But you have some really amazing dope stuff coming up. Uh, Want to share with us? I do. So this is so cool. Um, you guys know I moved down to Texas. I bought a small ranch, and I just been I for the last like kind 20 of plus acres are small, but you know. Well, it is because like the living section is only seven acres and then the rest of it is all wooded and it's leased out. So you really just see the seven and then the woods, <laughs> which okay. I haven't even gone in myself. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. I watch too many like alien abduction and Bigfoot movies. Like I'm not going in there by myself. No, I get it. But you you already <laughs> have like random occurrences, like these random holes that appear out of nowhere you're like that wasn't there yesterday like what do you mean it wasn't there yesterday where did it come from it's not, it's i mean there's just when you're out in the country i mean you just you realize like how strange or how beautiful like this world is agreed and i think and i and you know and i think that's awesome and so i really wanted to like kind of build up the ranch and i wanted to bring it into the barbecue community as like a place where people can get together, have farm to table dinners. Mm -hmm. And so I decided that we should do a give back, which is going to be a barbecue Academy. But I remember, and I mean, you traveled all over the world, like learning Q and I remember traveling all over to these barbecue schools. And so I kind of, took the things that I didn't get from barbecue school and that's what we're doing down here in the ranch in January. And one of the big differences is everything is hands-on. Like you as a barbecue student, you're not just being spoken to. It's not a lecture. Everything is hands-on. You create, you touch, you arrange everything. And so I think that's one of the big differences uh, that this barbecue school is doing. And then we're also keeping it super small. Mm -hmm. We have a rock star cast that's coming down to teach. I think we know one guy right now. Yeah, Al, you know. Al is killing it, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> but it's really cool because I have you coming down, which is amazing because you just bring in so many different aspects of barbecue. And for students to be able to learn that and see what you do, it's going to be just, it's going to be a beautiful thing. And I like the fact that we also have Al Fragoni, who's, you know, also live fire, but in a totally different way. And then we have me. And then we have Deanna who's going to be teaching you pizzas. And then we have, for the competition people, we have Bill Purvis from Chicken Fried Barbecue. I mean, this man is cleaning up out there in the barbecue competition circuit. And so you're getting to learn from all of these people and hands-on and have unlimited access to them, which is what I think is super, super rare. And it's beautiful. And people have just been reaching out saying, how, how can I go? How can I get there? What are we going to do? Where do I stay? You know, and then also you're doing it on a Texas ranch and you're going to be treated to a nice farm to table pitmaster dinner. Like these things are just things that you can't get. And especially in one sitting, and you are here at my barbecue academy. So I'm very stoked to be doing this for the first time, and I definitely want to keep it small. So we have it capped at 30 people. I was kind of playing with maybe only doing 20 um, because I don't want anybody to not get the instruction that they want to get and to be able to ask questions to all of us that are there and really help them. And then, you know, also because we are social media, we are influencers in the barbecue realm, help 
helping people actually get started in that aspect as well. So we're going to be teaching reality cooking and how you plate and how, you know, you present yourself out there on social media to potentially kickstart your career as well so that, you know, you can do the things that we started and make like bypass all the mistakes we made and be out there really showing your best self and what you cook and how you do and finding just like a path out there if you want to change careers as well and get into this. So I think that's something really unique that we're doing here at the Barbecue Academy that most people don't teach. So I'm very excited to see how people learn and how they react to that. No, I, I agree and I love it and I am beyond honored that you'd want me to be a part of your first class and session there. I mean, that's the great, set the bar low because it can only go up from there. <laughs> that's, that's all I'm saying. This is, we're just stepping over this one. We don't have to jump the broom. Um, I feel like I'm going to have to hire security though, just to like keep you safe. Whatever, whatever. I'm, I would I'm, hope he can keep himself yeah, safe. I'll, I'll be good. I'm, I'm like, she's, she's the muscle, you know, um, all so I, all many I people mean, that are so excited to see you. So nah, it's going to be awesome. Your mom does not count, but I'm so excited to see her too. <laughs> I haven't seen her she's in a, already in a said she's like, I'm in charge of the gate and parking. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I, I love it. She's so, oh no, this is going to be great. You guys, and you guys are like, why is she talking about her mom? If you guys met her, you'd love her too. She's so so much energy, <laughs> always laughing, ready to get down all the time. Oh, she's amazing. She's so amazing. Le- it's not she's jokes. Amazing. Like I'm legitimately excited to see her. <laughs> And then another cool thing, you know, is if you like animals, we got horses out here, we got chickens, and, you know, this is a active property, so they're going to be wandering all around, so you're really going to get a lot coming down to Barbecue Academy. You'll be immersed in a lot. That is that is great. <laughs> that is going to be really, really fun. I'm excited uh, to be a part of it, to, to just show and, and, and pass on some knowledge and I hope people get on because there's only 10 slots left. And the yeah, there's only first 10 20 slots sold left. really, really quickly. <laughs> like like in a ju- day. You just announced it. And I was like, oh, wow. So I know once we put this episode out, I don't think, hopefully if there's, if there are, if you're listening and if you're interested, now is the time. Uh, <laughs> stop listening. Yeah. Go over, go get it. We're going to have the link and everything in the show notes. But if you're listening, this is probably your last chance uh, it really together. is. And January 19th through the 21st, uh, the 19th is a night pitmaster dinner here at the ranch. If you cannot make it, we give everything to you on Saturday. Saturday is the full day of classes with all of the instructors, everybody doing their thing. We have lots of swag and gifts for all the students that come. And then Sunday morning, if you want to come back, we're going to do a beautiful brunch, handout certificates. Uh, any last questions you have, learning how to do some stuff, mm-hmm. and then sending you out there in the barbecue world so that you know that you can handle your own. Mm-hmm. And I'm really excited for this. No, so so am I. And I love that you are putting it on uh, a, a black woman in barbecue, putting on your own uh, program on your land, on your property, showcasing your craft. That's beautiful and amazing. And I hope it starts a trend like we'd gotten so much, you know, uh, like, Oh, I wanted to be there. I need to be at grill chill next year. I need to do this. Like, well, you know, everyone, everyone wants to be a part of something, but if you didn't make it start your own thing, you know, give it a shot. Like you mentioned, you've seen all these classes, you've been to so many of them and you're like, you know what? Something is missing. Let me, let me fill that gap a little bit. Let's, let's make it the way you want to. And it's so good when you're actually in the driver's seat, versus, you know, being in the passenger seat, um, just going to somebody else's thing. And, you know, it's so yes. different when you have ownership because you truly, truly yes. want the, everyone to know everything and make sure everybody's taken care of and mm-hmm. make sure that they really learn. And it's just such a different, I guess, perspective when you're like, okay, I'm doing this. This is going to be me. So what's the best reflection to have students come through and say, whoa, I really learned a lot, you know? Yeah, no, I agree. I love it. it. It's, it's so, and you talk about that, that ownership part is so important. How many times have we been to a, uh, American Royal or World Food or uh, a Jack Daniels Invitation or X, Y, and Z, but none of these are owned by any of 
us who participate in it. And I just not always thought that was the trippiest thing. Like Memphis in May is monstrous and not a pit master on the board has any, owns any of it, you know? None of it. I'm, and I think it's really time. Now yeah. is the time. If you want to get out there and start a business or get out into entrepreneurship, now is the time. It's right now. Yeah. Because there's still just so many opportunities and you just have to take the first step and doing whatever the vision is, whatever you see yourself doing in the future, who you want to be, you got to do it now. Agreed. A hundred percent agreed. I've been ta- talking to Pops about it. And I've been screaming it for the last year and a half on the pod. There is a renaissance happening in the world of barbecue right now. There's a hundred percent renaissance happening. It's not, it's not a, a, a mutiny or anything, but there's a very divine shift changing where I like the I like the mutiny kind of thing it kind of is because <laughs> you lead with terror <laughs> lead with and, then also, and then also like you think about it a lot of people are kind of just saying no to just oh I'm doing this so I can get sponsored and I can get picked up a lot of people are saying no I can I can cr- control my own destiny I can create I don't just have to sit and wait for a sponsor or a company to pick me up I'm going to do this myself and I know for me personally you know I've been in the game for a hot minute mm-hmm. and I thought to myself I didn't work this hard and take all the risks just to then say well I can only do as much as a sponsor wants me to do I have to wait for a major network to pick me up again before I can showcase who I am like you finally get step into that role of maturity where you realize like I got this I created this I'm who I am and if I invest in myself, I will be successful in whatever I do. And I think once you really connect those dots, you kind of become fearless in this barbecue culinary arena because you realize like you got yourself there when you're in the kitchen, it's you. And if you're good enough for somebody to want to hire you, then you're good enough to have your own company and do your own thing. Yeah. It's, and, and, and you said it like you, as long as you don't have to wait for validation from someone to say, to confirm that you are worth doing it. Sometimes so you doing it for yourself is the final confirmation. Like, oh, I can make this. And I think <laughs> more and more are going to realize they can. I, and I keep telling people, they, they better be careful. These other brands need to uh, really reinvest and su- truly support because it's not going to be long before a group of guys figures out a way to start putting some charcoal out there. And it's so true. And it's just, I want to see it because there's always like the main players, the big boys, but like, I'm, I really always root for, you know, the hometown hero, the small family business. And to see that people have the access to be able to do that. I just want to see more people in this arena as owners and whatever that looks like. I just, I really want to see that for 2024. I want to see a lot of people becoming business owners and, you know, calling their own shots and a lot of collaboration that's what I hope that 2024 looks like for the barbecue community. Mm, that's going to be good. It's definitely, it's going to be, a, 2024 is going to look a lot different than 2023. Uh, 2023 was a little, a little tight this year, you know, just. It like was very whole, tight and yeah. very like fearful. I mean, I know there were many times where I was just like, oh goodness, what am I going to do? You know, and I got so wrapped up in like, who's going to take me on? Who's going to save me that I forgot like it's not the princess in the castle syndrome. You yeah. can climb down yourself. Yeah. You can save yourself. And when you have that kind of confidence, then it may, it kind of resets everything. And you know, like, okay, this is why you're in barbecue. This is why you do barbecue. So, you know, let's get to roll and smoke the way you want to. And that's exciting. Yeah. Oof. I love it. <laughs> We're shaking our heads here <laughs> oh, yeah. in agreement. I, I, I absolutely <laughs> love it. And I, I know when you do this, when the class goes off and it's as just amazing as I imagine it will be, people are going to ask, like, how did you make that happen? Like, how did you, what did you do? Can I do that? And I'd love to. Yes, they can. I know, and maybe I'm getting, you know, cart before the horse type of thing. Is this going to be once a year? Are you going to do multiple throughout the year? What are you thinking? Or are you just Yeah, like, so this- the goal, the goal is to do for a year and Mm. see how it takes off. And then if people love it, then add some more, but in different cities where people have more access to it. 
So, but always on a ranch or a farm, no matter where it's going to be held, mm -hmm. so that people still get that part of the you know experience. But definitely traveling around with it, and definitely at least four times, probably probably max four times a year, yeah. to really get people out there barbecuing and get more people to want to barbecue that don't think that they can or thinks that it's too hard to realize that it's not. No, I, I, I agree. It's, I think it's as difficult as you want it to be, but as long as you're willing to actually put in that genuine effort, it's going to work out fine. You're, you're going to be able to, to make it happen. You're not going to have a, a, a huge issue. Yes, there's going to be bumps along the road. There's going to be some failures and some lessons learned, but that's legitimately part of the process like you, you're not it's gonna okay get to set things on fire and see what happens <laughs> yeah literally that is our job that is our job like hey i'm just gonna start this and uh we'll sort it out later and then eventually you just learn what has to happen you 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 turn a couple of briskets into hockey pucks and then you get a little bit better and better and better and you do some whole animals and I, i've seen numerous guys you know, turn a whole hog into charcoal real quick. Oh yeah, oh <laughs> um, yeah. But it's uh, it's gonna be one of those, man. I'm I'm so excited. I really cannot wait to get out there on the land and just see those who. We're come gonna around. have so much fun. I even have farm chores already for you to do, so well, it's gonna I'm be not good. Doing farm chores. I'm, <laughs> I'm not, I just need my shovel to do my demo. And then I'm 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 Irish goodbying over to the back of the barn with my with my brown water and a nice cigar. I think that's, that's what I'm doing. Uh, for farm chores. It's, it's outrageous. My the good thing about is Texas is it's so flat. The good thing about Texas is it's so flat. There's nowhere for you to hide. I can see you from miles <laughs> in well, any direction. <laughs> I'm going into the woods. Since you won't go into the woods, I'm going amongst the oak trees. I'm just going to hang out there. Like she'll never spot me here. <laughs> Throw him some wood. To if split, you come in the woods, that. you are on your own. Yeah, you go out in the woods, you are on your own. <laughs> it's the safe zone. <laughs> we don't go there. <laughs> No, no. I mean, I, I mean, I haven't even gone. So good luck. We'll tie a rope to you so we can like find you. <laughs> Pull him back. <laughs> we'll tug on the rope. Pull you back. <laughs> There's no slack. No, I, I love it. I love it. So where can people go to one find out about you and two sign up for this this class that is probably going to be fully booked out with yeah so if you're on instagram just go to blue smoke blair and to sign up go to my website blue smoke blair.com and you a little pop-up will come up for the school or you can just go to shop products and the school code is right there and i look forward to seeing everybody and starting you know starting to really throw down some cue there it is there it is absolutely love it thank you thank you thank you so much sis. i will call you a little later and thanks for jumping on here and thanks Thank so much for, for being part of Grill and Chill. It really means a lot to me. Oh, you're stuck with me now. I, know, I, know, I, know. I, can't, I can't even Bye, find the receipt. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Later. Later. There we go. Right on. That's, uh, yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot. I tell people, don't hang around me too much. You'll end up believing in yourself. Yeah. Well, I mean, again, <laughs> like listening to that, I mean, it's, I mean, it's this, it sounds so simple, yeah. but like, like just get out there and do it. Yeah. Like it's, a, it's I, I feel like a lot of people Nike think there's really like this like right. just crazy, like special sauce to it's like formula. whatever. It's like, no man, it's like, just do it. I mean, and even like Eric was saying, like, you're going to mess stuff up. You're yeah. going to figure out. And to me, the biggest thing is once you do something, you figure out what you don't know. Yeah. Like how often do we say it? We're like, Oh, didn't know that. Now we do. Now we do. And that won't, you know, it won't happen again, or we'll try our best to not let it happen again. Yeah, that, that's, it's just one of those things. Like, uh, I'd made my post, cause you know me, I don't do new year's resolutions. I always reflect back as my birthday approaches and it's coming up in, uh, gosh, what, I don't know. Just about, a few days. Yeah. It's not far off from now. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's just around the corner. Um, and I was just reflecting and I was thinking back, I always go back to the, the start of it all. And just that night where all the food went bad in the calm. Like I'm supposed to be at the venue in a couple hours. I'm like, what am I doing? Uh, and I just chose not to quit. Cause right then and there would have been a very justifiable and understandable reason. But like, yeah, you probably, it's probably a sign. Not, not to. a lot of skin in the game. Yeah. It's like, cool. I can back away. Yep. You know, no, will ever know. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I didn't, I stayed up. I scoured every store I could to get, Goods back when stores were still open twenty four seven, long before the world of the vid, 
and yep. um, did the event and pushed through and continued pushing through and made the mistakes and did the horror marketing, did the better marketing, got the craft better, and then I blink and like even stuff like this, people will say, oh, if I had this and this, I'd do a podcast too. It's like, bro, I was in a broom closet with a duvet and a pair of wired headphones sweating my ass off. Yeah, the old white Apple headphones. Hold the mic. Hold the mic. Those mics are surprisingly they, good. They really are, <laughs> you know, and I just... It, I think it how these people have it now. You got your AirPod Pros in. Yeah. You don't have to deal with a wire. You don't. Just put your pros <laughs> and, and record. It sounds so much better than what we had to fight for. Um, and we were... I, I I remember the early days of trying to push the rub and traveling back to finish my shift to go do the podcast over at Atlanta Grill Company with Gary and guys. Shout out to them. Always huge supporters. Um, Are they still running that? Yeah, yeah. Hell they're yeah. still doing it, man. Still Hell crushing. Yeah. I want to do something over there. Honestly, like if I was going to do a, a small little intensive, it would be there if they'd let me yeah. make a you know live fire out in the parking lot somewhere. <laughs> Probably melt the asphalt. Um, but from those days, um, of trying to pedal the, the, the rub doing the radio circus, doing the, uh, vineyard tours, the chateau tours, the wines, countless, countless pop-ups and late nights and crazy church shift orders. And now I look at it, I'm just like, you know, we've got to go to, uh, New York in a couple of weeks, we got to hop on a private jet to go feed a couple <laughs> hundred people, you know, to double back the same day, you know, and then just after that. As I was say, it's not even a 24 hour, it's, it's like a 12 not, hour it's, trip. It's, it's, yeah, <laughs> it's just blinking your day, you know, um, and then next up. Uh, Which I will say to me, that's been like the current, like, like pinch me. Like, yeah. did we get asked to do that? And is that yeah. how it's going to happen? It's yeah. Like, okay. Yeah, it's very, it's, it's just. Doesn't it seem quite real, but. It doesn't. Okay. It's like, oh. Yeah, just and it's just, and it's become really like yeah, we gotta jump back on the jet. I'm like, all right, cool, let's do it. You know, yeah, yeah, grab the stuff. Like, you know, like wait, when did this become? <laughs> you know, and then we blink, and then the next we're feeding uh, thirteen hundred uh, people for a very large brand, and you know, that's just other things. So you go from. For me, it's like how I, I, brother, I remember dreading buying two briskets. Because I've been in this since 2014. Mm -hmm. I remember, like, what am I going to do with this much meat? Plus, I've got <laughs> three whole pork butts and three, you know, three packs of nine. So, I've, what am I going to do with this much meat? Can I move it? To now, I'm doing barbecue math for, scaled down from the 6,000 earlier this year. But now, I'm doing barbecue math for 2,000 and 1,500 people and doing this. And now, I'm like, all right, cool. Like, not even blinking and laughing every time I think of the fact that I didn't buy a trailer at a point in time because the trailer enclosure and everything was so much. And now I'm like, yeah, I spend that on briskets and butts in a month. And it's just growth, you know, mm -hmm. it, it, I wish I, I really wish cause so many people DM and when you tell them the truth, they don't believe you and they think you're gatekeeping. I'm like, I a hundred percent, there is no secret formula. There is no key. There's nothing I can tell you that's going to get you there. It's not a two plus two thing, right? There's some imaginary numbers thrown in there, <laughs> <laughs> legitimately. <laughs> but I said it in my post. Uh, faith is a dark room, and you don't know there's a floor until you take the first step. Yep. I cannot guarantee you you will succeed if you try, but I can 100%, without a doubt, guarantee you will fail if you never start. It's the only guarantee I can give you. Just give it a shot. Like it's not that. It's 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 and trust me, I get it. It is a little I hear those voices. I remember laying in bed. Oh yeah, it's intimidating to do something that you've thinking about it. Never like, done and you have questions about. Yeah. But no matter what it is, that's intimidating. And you did. It's just like starting a new job. You didn't do it, but you started it. Yeah. You got better and you got better and you yeah, were you the it. best right off the bat? No. No. No one is. But you practice, and there's something to say about really practicing. Like, you can't do this on weekends alone. Mm -hmm. You have to do this multiple times. Pardon me. You have to do this consistently, reach out, be a part of the community, accept the failures, and, and, and grow. 
most feasible. If I can fall ass backwards into it and make something happen, <laughs> you guys with intent should definitely be able to crush it. Well, and I feel like nine times out of ten, the other thing, too, is, like, people are afraid to talk about their failures or what went wrong and acknowledge that stuff. And then, I mean, I feel like every time you, like, say, yeah, I did this and that went, like, really wrong like this, most of the time the people in the same space went, oh, yeah, been there. Oh, yeah. I did that one. I've done that. I've done I've done the events. I've had the people like, what's the least you've made on an event? $52, $52, and it cost me 500 bucks to make that $52. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, yeah, I've done it. I've, I've only left with 52. I've had weeks over weeks where the venue was either double booked or, you know, uh, they'd ha- got another pop-up there with me, and I'm just there like, oh, well, I'm going to still make it do. I'm going to still sell and try to make something happen. I've yeah. had... Uh, clients try to stiff. I've learned the the headaches. I've gone through get making sure everything's done through contracts. I've seen the bad deals. I flipped a seven grand deal into a multi figured deal. Like there's so much that has gone through. And for those who are like, oh, it's television. No, that's a stupid response. <laughs> <laughs> Just flat out, that's a god awful response. How many people are on? Beat Bobby Flay, Guys Grocery Games, all these shows, Chop, Nice. So what what happens with them? So that's shout out to Rashad. Shout out to Rashad Jones, crushing it, my man, hundred grand, destroying the barbecue scene in Ocala, Florida, and just an overall wonderful guy. For so many reasons, I'm, we're gonna have to have Rashad on. I'm gonna shoot him a message. I'm like, hey, brother, come on, tell the people how dope you are. <laughs> tell everyone how to beat Bobby Flay. <laughs> yeah, exactly. What's the secret? <laughs> um, but you do all that. It's not the end all be all it's a shot and you have to be able to make something out of it there's a lot of people are on there and you go back and they're not doing anything maybe by choice or just maybe not having the proper know-how um and the i always believe that time is a great equalizer like over time and longevity like we know some great bops that were one hit wonders but there's very few who are able to be in that field for a long time yep and it's navigating and it's being really, really good at what you do. Yep. And constantly changing, you know. Shout out to Evan again. He's just, just turned 17. And I told him, you know, and, and if he keeps at it in five years, he'll be as good as me. And in 10, he'll be better. But I told him, you're not. You're going to have to work hard as hell every day of those five <laughs> years. <laughs> you're going to have to work hard as hell every year of those five years. Because I'm not, I'm not slowing down at all. No. And just as... Um, fruitful as it was for him to be there that weekend it was ju- equally as fruitful for me it's like cool oh yeah it's Top reinvigorating really yeah step it up yeah and and, and and go and grow and he went out and got himself a little open fire kit yeah a i saw start. i was I like saw. That's, that's, that makes me smile yeah that makes me smile and a uh, huge shout out to uh williams knife company they gifted me a knife and i gifted it to evan i gave him my knife that they sent me nice and i was like well you know if you're going to be out here killing the game, I got to make sure you got a sharp blade. So yep. that knife went to him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, I, I hope he uh, he uses it well. But I'm sure he will. I'm just excited, man. I'm thrilled for everything to come in the next year. You know, like I said, birthday in a couple of days in that state of reflection. And we've talked about some pretty lofty things that now all of a sudden don't seem that lofty anymore. Yeah, I mean, and I will say there's, like, another thing, too, like, not to go off on too much of a tangent, I guess, but, like, once there's momentum, yeah, it's, like, kind of a crazy thing what happens when you have a little bit, you kind of take the next step, take the next step, and you kind of look back and go, man, at the beginning, I never would have thought of this. Yeah. Like, you you wouldn't even know where to start, or you would think it was just impossible to do, and, like, yeah. you get a little bit of momentum behind you, and it's it's dangerous what can happen. Like, like you're just saying, those dreams might not be dreams for too long if you just get going. Yeah, because you're pushing that giant boulder up the hill. And then before you know it, you reach the crest and it starts to go on its own. And it's a slow roll. Then it picks up and you're like, holy cow, like this is this is <laughs> going, going. And you can't stop it if you wanted to. Yeah. That's that's pretty trippy to me. Thinking yeah. back to certain things. I, I remember doing the uh this and this was not my title but it was bastards day barbecue that they use i used to do with the radio station way back in the day 
and I remember like handing out my first set of samples of the rubs once I got the stickers on there and had them like a, a pre-packed because mm-hmm. the co-packer was like, we're going to charge you this much to a sticker. I was like, I'll do it myself. <laughs> <laughs> and handing out the rubs from that to, you know, doing the full rub uh, announcement and then like the my first order fully selling out to now what putting on a whole festival where I can get other people to shine and spotlight them. And I plan on just creating more hyphens for myself, you know, like yeah. pitmaster, philanthropist, event founder, you know, soon, you know, author is going to get put up on there. I'm working on creating more intentional hyphens and being really, really good at all of them. It's going to be a hell of a 2024, man. <laughs> There's a few things to get knocked out. <laughs> <There's a few> <laughs> <thing>. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, when you guys see it, you're like, oh, those boys are working. <laughs> there's yeah, usually some behind-the-scenes stuff going on. <laughs> yeah, there's always some. Like, f- as, as much as we share, there's so much that we don't. And when when the things that we don't share come to light, it's like, where did this come from? Where did you find the time? Just make it. Yeah. Just make it. But uh, with that being said, that has been This Week in Barbecue, the Barbecue Focus podcast that introduces you both the good, the bad, and everything in between in the world of barbecue, I've been your host, Rashid Phillips, and today my co-host has been Mr. Lee Garman. And as always, tell a friend or tell two friends, like, share, subscribe, and uh, be good to one another. Cheers. And go catch Brian's restaurant. Yes, Owen and Hall. Owen and Hall. Owens and Hall? Owen. Owen and Hall. That's right. Link in the description. It's in there. <laughs> I don't want to be like, you know, the comedian. Uh Black people put an S on everything. (laughs) 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 And on that, we're out.